Welcome back, poets and first-timers, to this first Anchor episode of Spring 2014. I'm James Kroll. And I'm Kiara Downs for QCTV News. For our first segment, we're going to go to talk about President Hertzberger and her trip to the White House to find out more information on funding for college students with low incomes. Let's go to Tori Esker to hear all about it. This past January, our very own President Herzberger was invited to meet the President of the United States. Let's find out a little bit about her trip to the White House. So what brought you to the White House a couple months ago? Um, I went in November uh, after being invited to help the President's economic advisor, Gene Sperling, organize the White House Summit on College Access. I was invited to that meeting um, uh, shortly after Dean Ortiz testified before Under Secretary Cantor about Whittier and uh, our success in educating a very diverse student body. And why do you think Whittier College was chosen as one of the colleges to participate in this? Uh, for a couple of reasons. One is our diversity. Um, as you know, we've been a majority minority school for four years. And we're a school that has a mission to educate students to respect people of all backgrounds. And that, of course, is, is something that the president and the first lady really care about. And how was it meeting the president and the first lady? It was, it was pretty exciting, actually. Uh, there were 80 of us college presidents, and then there were people from other areas, philanthropists and uh, leaders of educational organizations, and we were all, we all whipped out our cell phones and we're taking <laughs> photos, and um, it, was, it was a lot of fun. They look exactly like they do on television. So, President Herzberger, were you allowed to take a picture with the president? Oh, I wish. I could take pictures of the president and the first lady, but uh, no, they did not arrange a time for us to line up and get our photos off uh, taken. And that's sad because I was anticipating uh, taking a little selfie with him, <laughs> but uh, I think he had important things to do that day. So are you going back anytime soon or in the near future? Uh, actually, the president uh, invited us to come back in one year to report on progress on all of the initiatives of providing access and opportunity. So uh, I've, I will definitely clear my calendar to go back. Great. We look forward to interviewing when that comes around. Okay. It sounds like President Herzberger learned a lot about funding for low-income students. QCTV looks forward to the opportunities awaiting these students. For QCTV, I'm Victoria Esker. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Tori. We look forward to hearing more about that in the future. Our next story is about the Whittier College Brazilian Percussion Troupe, who was exclusively invited to perform at the Bowl Championship Series in the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Blanca Pineda gets an inside look. Hello, my name is Blanca Pineda, and I'm here reporting for QZTV News. As you may have heard, the Whittier College Brazilian World Percussion Troupe has just made its debut at the 2014 VCS. Let's go talk to professor and associate Danny Lozano to see what he has to say about this. The uh, prime sport hospitality people were looking for, um, they wanted marching band or, or, or a, a drum troupe. And uh, they sent an email, and I responded to it, and they, they uh, immediately emailed back and said, you know, we would love to have you. And I thought, you know, we were going to be one of many groups. We were like the only group of Southern California to actually respond to and actually do it. And it was a great experience. I mean, I mean we had to get here like uh, two days prior to uh, the opening of uh, Jan term. Um, we rehearsed all those afternoons. And then, uh, you know, fortunately for us, um, we were able to go and get bussed over there and got good transportation, and we played, and it was a great experience. So you can tell us about how the Brazilian World Percussion Troupe came about. Um, it was sort of interesting because um, I had been toying around with the idea of, of uh, creating a, a world percussion group, but the issue is we're so small that we don't have enough uh, music students who come with, with musical training, and I thought, well, you know, we could do a, a percussion ensemble as an alternative to a pep band. And um, the idea grew out of that. And it turned out that uh, there was a senior who was willing to, to, to give a senior class gift. Um, 
and contribute to something that would really be cool for, for school spirit. And uh, we were able to get the money, and then through my friends, we were able to get a whole entire uh, Brazilian ensemble batucada drumming set. And uh, that's how it came about. And we started as a class, and uh, we did a couple of basketball games, a couple of football games, and uh, now we're starting to get a, a little bit of a reputation outside of the institution as well. So as you can see, this performance was a very big deal. Here we have Caitlin Seneca, who was one of the performers. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, hi. Um, I'm a sophomore, and I'm a kinesiology major here at Whittier College. Not being in the music department, how is it that you became involved in the percussion troupe? Um, well, I took the January term class last semester, well, last year actually, and he asked me to be a part of the ensemble, and I had so much fun with it that I agreed right away, and I've been doing it ever since. So if other students at Whittier College want to get involved, how do they go about that? Yeah, definitely. We need more people in the group. Um, they can either do the Jan term class or they can do, uh, they can come and sign up for the, during the semester and he welcomes everybody. We like as many people as we can get, no exclusions. We just, we want to have fun and play music. Well, there you have it, poets. If you want to become a part of the Whittier College World Percussion Troupe, please make sure to talk to Danny Lozano at the music department. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Blanca. This month's Poet Spotlight is senior Crystal Anderson. She's a political science and global studies double major. She is also a member of Model UN. And with all this, she still finds time to spend with her pets, Rover and Spaz. Let's go to Brie Campanero to hear all about her. Congratulations, Crystal Anderson. You're this month's Poet Spotlight. Oh, so I'm so excited. So tell us a little bit about yourself and what brought you to Whittier College. Um, well, I am a California girl, so I've always been from California. And my mom went to Whittier Law School, so I kind of had a connection to the Whittier name. One thing that really happened was I applied for, or I tried out for the cheer team when I was in high school still. And I came to Whittier for a first practice in the summer and I just like was so excited. I really felt the vibes. I just felt so connected to Whittier. It was like the perfect fit. So um, I came into Whittier as an engineering major and I was really excited. I loved physics in high school and I loved math and I came in and I did calculus and physics as my, my freshman writing seminar because I was trying to like fill all my requirements but I couldn't take all engineering classes right. and so I ended up getting steered in a totally different direction. And so what direction are you in now? Um, now I'm a double major in poli sci and global and cultural studies wow. and I minor in studio art. Really? Yeah. That's really exciting. I think it's really important to like pursue your passions, the things that that interest you. Like don't just you shouldn't stick to something that you think is right. You should right. really keep an open mind. Definitely, so definitely. And where has your passion taken you? What what new adventures have you found here at Whittier College? Um, well, Whittier College, I think, has a really strong social activist group. And I think yeah. that one of my passions that I discovered through going on the poli sci route was human rights. Mm -hmm. And so I did a, an internship with the West Hollywood City Council. And I got to do um, a lot of uh, work there with human rights um, in Russia with LGBT rights. I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain yeah. what I did, but that was really cool. And I also organized um, a couple human rights speaker series events there. Mm -hmm. And so what other types of activities on campus have you been a part of? Um, well, I've been a participant of MUN for the past three years, Model United Nations, um, where I really get to take some poli sci to the next level. Um, my first year, I was just a member of Switzerland. But um, last year, I was the permanent representative, which is kind of like a country team leader for Norway. And this year, I'm Russia. And I'm really excited because I get to be like the bad guy country. <laughs> and then um, I've also been a peer mentor at Whittier, which I think is really special. And I can see the change in like how I've done at that through my years, too. Or also, um, I know you were part of the home homecoming court. So let's talk about that a little bit, how much fun you had. I had so much fun being on part of homecoming court. It felt amazing. And I know that it was all a result of ever since freshman year being really involved in all different aspects of right. campus. Freshman year, I worked in the library first thing. Everyone knew me as that girl when the, at, the, at the front desk. Just every, I became a Saxon. So being a member of a society is some, one of the most rewarding things you can do at Whittier College, I think. And they Crystal, did you take advantage of any study abroad opportunities here at Whittier? I, I did. I was, because I'm double majoring and minoring, I wasn't able to take a whole semester, which I kind of wish I got to do because it would have been amazing. But I took a Jan term, two weeks uh, abroad experience to Denmark, and that was 
amazing. That was, I completely have a whole new perspective, new appreciation for everything. And I think that would happen to anyone, not just, you know, you go and you get the new perspective over there and appreciation of everything there. But I think it brings, you come home and you have a new appreciation for everything here as well. So I highly encourage it to anyone study abroad. Definitely. And tell us a little bit about the area that you visited. Oh, I went to Copenhagen. Um, it's very, it's pretty similar to America because it's, you know, an um, old European country. They don't want to need to be super successful all-stars. Um, their goal is kind of more to be average, more to be a contributing member of society at the same level of everyone else. Their rich don't wear lots of jewelry and um, they really support their poor. They have a great social system, which is what we were studying there, the welfare system. So, and now I'm excited. Um, I'm applying for, I've just finished applying for law schools and I'm waiting for my results to come in. And um, Whittier helped me get a good score on my LSAT and the classes have been really good. The teachers have been so supportive. I think the small classes really helped me have a good GPA because um, that's how my learning style works best. Um, Crystal, word on the street is you had a really high LSAT score. Tell us a little bit about it. Um, well, I worked really hard for the LSAT. I ended up getting a 172, um, which is in the top 99th percentile, and qualified me to join Mensa, the High IQ Society. So that was really cool. Um, I took a class for it the summer before I took the um, LSAT, but then I, instead of taking a class during that Jan term, um, the LSAT was in February. I spent all of that jam term and up until the February LSAT taking an LSAT every day. I'd take four hours out of my day and go sit in the library and take an LSAT. And um, every day I could see my scores improving and getting better. I was learning and um, that's the best way to prepare, I would say, just to keep doing it. Hard work really paid off for you. Definitely. It was a lot of time. It was really hard, but I, it really paid off. And it's hopefully going to get me into one of the best law schools out there. So. And I'm sure it will. So I'm just really excited for law school in the future. And hopefully after that, after being a lawyer, go into politics and see where life takes me. That sounds really exciting. I wish you the best. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Crystal is one of the many heavily involved poets on campus whose experience benefited her personal growth. Whittier College has plenty of opportunity to help every student searching for their match. If you're looking to get more involved on campus, visit the LEAP office to find the club or organization that's just for you. Thanks, Bree. And now it's time for our short sports segment with Natalie Munguia. Welcome back, poets. This is Natalie Munguia with your QCTV short sports update. Men's basketball lost a game against Claremont with a score of 67-87. to This puts their record at four wins and five losses in the Skya. With freshman Margot Campos out with a knee injury, the Poets have not been victorious. They hold a record of 1-18 in the Skyak. Their last game was against Claremont and they lost with a score of 70-43. to Be sure to come and support both men and women's basketball as they play Chapman this Saturday. Men's basketball plays at 5 p.m. while women's basketball plays at 7 p.m. Whittier College Sports Network will be broadcasting all spring sport games. So be sure to log on to wcpoets.com. If you want to watch highlight videos along with post-game interviews, you can go on youtube.com slash the WCSN. I'm Natalie Munguia, and thanks for watching the QCTV Short Sports Update. This has been James Krull and Kiara Downs for QCTV News. Thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching.